call the September 8th regular scheduled select board meeting to order. Um, to my far left is Justin Lawrence. To my left is Flo Smith. To my right is John Quinn. I'm Brad Town. This also is Tom Bassey, our acting administrator, and our treasurer, Diane Isabel. Additions or changes to the agenda, Tom? None, Mr. Chair. And public comment. Is there any public comment? <laughs> Hearing none? Hearing none. We'll move on to Treasury Report, Diane. Okay. Um, I have something to sign, but this is the third installment for the Pain Turnpike North. Um, it's been approved by the contractor, the engineer, and the USDA. And it is for. Three hundred and twenty-two thousand eight seventy-two fifty-five. And this is like the third installment. So it's all paperwork, and I'm going to sign that. So that's why I can get. Have, have a motion to allow me to sign this thing. Two and three hundred thousand on my own. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Just remind me, what was the financing through uh, CAT? Was it 3%? Um, I didn't even take that in consideration because they don't have, um, they do not really gear it towards municipalities where the banks gear it right directly to municipalities. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I knew it was more than. I think um, it was more, anyways. Oh, yeah. My yeah. yeah. recollection is 3%. Yeah. Three and a half on when okay. Special. So Brad, we have Jason Morrell here. He's uh, asked for working in the town right away uh, permit. Jason? Yep. Yeah. Come on up, Jason. Come on up and talk about your project. Can I just sit here? Sure, okay, whatever. Uh, yeah, uh, so. Speak loud. What's it, loud, yeah. I was approved for a building permit, a zoning permit, a few years ago <clears throat> for some buildings down at the Wyman property and one of the stipulations was that uh, I changed the entrance on Dog River Road um, away from Route 12, because currently it's right next to Route 12. So we're planning on moving the drive um, across from Morse's Auto entrance, which is about 200 feet away from the Route 12 intersection. That's pretty much the gist of it. You're talking about the green building, right? Uh, blue, light blue. Yeah. Morse is across the road. Motor Morse Venture is in it. To where all the U-Haul trucks are parked? Yeah. Yep. What was the size of your culvert, Jason? Uh, there's an existing culvert there now, which I believe is 24 okay. inch, and we're just going to reuse the existing culvert. Yeah. It's going to be long enough for you? Uh, yeah, it's about 40 feet, so yeah. we have right I now. So that wasn't you, wasn't you'd have it, uh, so you could use it. Really, the is that long. Yeah, it's it's about 40 feet. The curb cut, I believe, is only 24 feet, so yeah. it should be more than adequate. How long will the work take? Um, approximately a day. Okay. So you're, you're not trying to shut down the road or anything like that? No, there's no... there's no. Uh, you can take that from your side of the... Correct. Everything will be dug from my property. Nothing okay. in the road itself. Okay. 
Again, that was a condition of the DRB permit when that new building uh, was uh, uh, permit two years ago, I think, was not correct. Yeah, 1821. I see on here it says uh, September 1st completion date. Obviously, that's changed. Well, yeah, so <laughs> ASAP. Okay, Tim Davis went down, he had, he had a note on there as well. A motion, motion to approve uh, J and H properties to work in the town right of way. Second. Oh. Any further discussion? I just, I just have another question. Sure. What are you guys doing right above there? Uh, there's going to be storage units being built up top there. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's it. Be <laughs> <Pretty> nosy. <laughs> uh, who made the motion? Uh, could you include uh, permit number 20056? Give me a motion. So amended. Any other discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. There you go. What's the time frame? Is it good to go? I'll get to it. I'll get to it tomorrow. Okay. Perfect. Probably as soon as I sign it. Awesome. Thanks Start so much. Last in the morning. Have a great night. Thank, Thank you. you. Enjoy your evening. Thanks. not here tonight, so I'm going to fill the select board in. You may recall the last meeting you guys approved uh, getting a section of the proposed sleeve and testing it in the culvert to see if it would fit. Uh, we did that about 10 days ago now, and it did not fit. So the recommendation from the contact the sleeve manufacturer was to look at a size of sleeve uh, about uh, two sizes down. I don't know what this, what, uh, two sizes down. So uh, Otter Creek ran the hydraulic capacity of that, and that hydraulic capacity failed. Um, uh, the, the state requirements. So contact, we, uh, we asked them to uh, about actually a, a bolting on a section on the floor is the balance of the of the culvert is is good and um, they stated that the bottom is so deteriorated that that could not work so we are here to plan d now um, we're going to talk to the agency natural resources about allowing us to, to uh, concrete the floor of that and then um, that concrete has a, has a life of about 25 years. Um, yeah, my sense is that, that they're likely not to grant that and so we do not know what plan E is right now. Yeah. Uh, it may, may even be having to be the dreaded open cut that we've all been trying to avoid. Um, but that's where we stand on that project right now. So we're still waiting for some more answers? Still waiting for plan D to be floated and see if, if that's going to work. Is there, um, so what basically what's happening is the weight of the pads going over the top is crushing the bottom in and it has oblong the it's door. elliptical now rather than round yeah. yep and again the, the, to, to the, drop it to the size that would fit would cut your flow down too much mm -hmm. correct mm -hmm. yep and you can't put a half culvert in on the bottom alone because that they, they don't think that'll hold i contact said that there's not enough of the material there to, to hold it to. So I don't have any good answers for you today. So how thick is the, how thick the concrete going to be? Uh, how far up the size does it go? 
I don't know, Brad. So it's, it'll be, if you remember the photograph, um, it's probably two feet, three feet on the other side of it. Imagine they would cut the, cut the, uh, the, the worn piece of uh, the existing culvert out and um, form it in and make it a, so it has a little bit of freeboard on it. Um, yes. But I'm speculating at best. But there's issues with concrete, as high pH, high pH is not good in streams and yeah. you know, so um, no, there's no good news to report on that. But. No, I had, a, I had a question about it. I had spoken with North Carolina Logic, works for the state. I don't know if you know him at all. Um, he's also on the board of the, oh, he's on the fire department. But um, he works in D Trans. He said D Trans has hydraulic, uh, hydraulic section that would do a water flow assessment, which he probably obviously not know this, but I don't know if they'd be a resource. But uh, what size, they'd verify the culvert size that would be needed for the demand and they would verify the sleeve acceptability, but they would also advise if a concrete based slab would be sufficient for the repair. So I don't know if that would save the town any money by having these trains look at that. Um, we've already done the first piece of that. Right. Yeah. I'm thinking, well, I'm on to the second piece of this, which is, I mean, you just carry us. Uh -huh. We're trying to reach out to the state and see anything. They think it doesn't cost anything. But, you know, get another opinion on it. So why? That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. I'm in favor of that. Yeah. Well, we said they're about six months out, but I mean, it's like we're going to be six months out at this point. Right. right. So yeah, we're, we're dead. I'm, I think we're pretty much dead for the winter at the time. They let you get an emergency order. Uh, uh, again, it's, uh, D Trans has allowed uh, working past the, yeah. their recommended time frame. Um, yeah, I, I understand about. The, I, I'm sort of hesitant on changing horses when, right when we're right when we're trying to do this. Thing. We're in the middle of culvert. Yeah, we're really in the middle of culvert and an issue. I, I really don't want to try to go and re-educate people all the way from, from day one. It, it just... I don't we've got bad news. I don't know why I stuck up in you. Is that, you're not thinking that's a good idea? I don't think it's... I, I think we should find out in as timely manner as we can. But they're six months out. I, it, it just doesn't make any sense trade chaining horses in the middle of this, this rodeo. If that culvert fails, do we have a greater chance of uh, emergency aid from the state? Well, I was kind of looking at that from that perspective, too. I understand where you're coming from, but at the same time, I'm thinking since we're probably not going to be able to do anything for six months, and they're six months out, if we get their opinion, there might also be the possibility of some teamwork in there or financing, you know, because uh, it's something that's been on my mind. I hadn't broached it, but I'm really glad that you spoke with me because I think the state could be beneficial I don't. I don't view it as changing gears. I view it as you know getting bad news from a doctor and getting a second opinion just to make sure you're going down the right path. Well, and I, I just, and I'm not involved in any type of V trans decisions whatsoever. But I, I see, you know, some of the press releases and things like that that come out where they're giving, you know, money for failed bridges and roads. Or they might I, it just some, makes me wonder what the criteria is, and mm -hmm. you know that they count on that road as well. Maybe they'd look at Richardson or over there. I'm pretty sure Richardson Road will be on us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the right. thing, thing that strikes me about that is is that uh, the Fisher Road, I mean, that's access to the hospital. Why would they not take and try to fund that? Well, yeah. Well, and they're a psych hospital, too. Right? Both we'll hospitals. Funding is a se separate question from the viability of, of repair, right? Yeah. You know, I, I, if, if, if you go seek the funding after you got a solution, right? Yeah. And we're still in the solution they're, seeking. We are in the solution so seeking. That's what they're doing, so. I mean, I would, huh. I would encourage, or I think we should reach out. That's just the way I feel about it. I'd like, to, have you seen one of these sleeves they put in? I'm just curious about that. The, the 
the, the full the full yes. yes 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 they just they uh, they sent when they uh, contact sent us the quote they had a picture of it it's you know it's a, yeah, just a big tube it's a big tube and it comes in sections because you can't you know you have to you have to build it in sections so, so the, the, the road is settled enough so that the culvert is correct and that's that's why the the test section written slide through slide all over the right. Well, I guess all we I mean if, if the concrete is the is plan D, I guess you need to find out from the state if it that's, that's the conversation we're having. You know, let us find out if it works. Yeah. Uh, and, <clears throat> well, how long will it take for them to decide on that? I I did not bring my crystal ball here, uh, so I don't really have a good idea. Uh, You're talking uh, a month, I, two I, weeks, I, three weeks. My my sense is we're gonna we're meeting gonna meet tomorrow uh, to talk about it. Get all the all all of the Berlin team together. Uh, and uh, hopefully talk to the state about it in short order here, but before the end of the week, and try to get get a temperature reading from them. Uh, again, my gut's telling me is that it's likely not going to be approved. But yeah. that it there is an emergency situation here. So well, take and send us emails and find out. Yeah. Anything on this, else on this on Fisher Road Culver? Okay, um, Brandy Saxon and Carlin Weasel, Berlin Town Center. Brandy, are you here? Yeah, she's. Um, so she's not here. So I'm gonna. I sent you guys or in your packet um, four pages mm -hmm. of the schedule where we are today. Um, uh, so that's just where as we said the last time we met we're going to give this to the select board here on a, on a regular basis uh, just review it if you have any questions get a hold of me and, and we'll get them addressed uh, what we're working on now are the um, water and uh, sewer allocation requirements of uh, Newtown Center you'll you'll be seeing a draft ordinance uh, uh, outlining what uh, what the town needs to adopt with respect to allocating uh, water and, and sewer to to that project. I believe you're going to see that at, at the next meeting, and um, so you, you'll get a chance to to review it. Uh, it's uh, it's a, an ordinance. I think you have to have two hearings on an ordinance. I think yep. the town has two hearings up there on the ordinance. Um, so it's you're looking for the for you guys to adopt it sometime probably end of October, assuming you guys are all right with the language that, that we we have um, written for you. <clears throat> Carla, you there? I'm here. Okay. So I also uh, I'm Carla, I am just gonna uh, share what you and I talked about today. <clears throat> This is a, what you have in your pack in two pages, a draft uh, 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 letter of support. Uh, the Planning Commission tomorrow is going to be talking about a, um, uh, looking at a uh, municipal planning grant for the state. So Carla, you want to talk about what the Planning Commission is talking about tomorrow? Sure, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, uh, hello everyone, and I wish I could be there, but I do have cold symptoms, so I'm being responsible and staying home. Um, the Planning Commission um, discussed the idea of applying for a municipal planning grant to assess the uh, municipal facility needs. Uh, it would to work in conjunction with the town center application. Um, as you know, we, it requires a municipal facility, and since we... Um, we thought this would be a good, good opportunity to apply for some funding to take a look at the needs of the town and in terms of, you know, the facility needs 
so that we could assess options for um, possibly locating it in the town in the new town center, but also just generally getting uh, that assessment for the town um, for future needs. Um, and and I think one of the needs is as is a meeting space so that we don't have to do this um, uh, in this in times like this. But um, very I cannot hear anything that's going on on, on your end. Just so you know. Um, so that's pretty much it. It would probably, the, the biggest, the, what the select board would have to commit to would be a matching portion, but the grant would, you know, the most that would be is 10% of the proposed budget. And so I think the maximum grant amount is in the $20,000 range. So we would, it would probably be $1,000 to $2,000 that we'd be looking for, for a commitment from the select board. So it's a minimal investment and hopefully we would get um, something that would identify you know ways moving forward to, to satisfy all the, the needs of the town in terms of facilities i think it also works with the capital budget budget requirement too tom right because it would have some idea of um how to how to budget funding for our facilities that's that's correct yes yeah. yeah. So I know, I think that's about it. Can you anything else, Tom? No, that's, I know this, the planning mission is, is going to uh, bring this up tomorrow. Uh, the, 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 this has to be submitted by the end of this month to the agency, so that's why we're, we're a couple days ahead of the planning mission on this thing. So just so you guys had a chance to re review it and ask any questions. Um, but we'll get it. We'll as get soon as we have the proposal, we'll share it so that you can review it. Yeah, the budget. Yeah. And again, they're taking it up tomorrow. Brandy, I see you joined. I've gone through your stuff. I don't think we're, I think we're good. Okay. We're ahead of schedule. Yeah. We I like it, baby. Thank you, Carla. Okay. Feel yes. Thank you, Carla. Yep. Thank you, Carla. Feel better. Luckily, you're cold. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Okay. So, uh, Western Mobile Home co <coughs> So, with us is Linda Thurston with the Western Mobile Home Co-op. Yes. Uh, I shared uh, with the select board uh, uh, their letter to you. They're looking for a potential uh, support for an application for speed reduction on Route uh, 12 near the, uh, from uh, Westons to the uh, city of Montpelier uh, line. And, um, and Linda's here to talk about what they are thinking. And right. Uh, from the Montpelier Berlin town line down to at least past the Dog River Farm, the speed limit's 50. I mean, you leave Montpelier, it's 25, 30, 35, and you hit that hill, and they're sailing right down through toward the farm. And if we stop you know, to turn into Weston's, we're in fear of getting rear-ended or kids getting hit. You've got the school buses stopping there. You've got businesses. And there's 83 homes in the park going in and out every day. And the traffic comes down through there so fast that, you know, it needs to be slowed down. And if you could submit a letter to the state asking them to lower the speed limit. I know Linda Weiss talked that, you know, I think it would be good that if there was a, a resolution from your board and if you can get your residents down there to sign a, a petition, petition to, okay. to talk about that, I think that would carry more weight. Uh, just, and, 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 but just as a side note, lowering the speed limit doesn't, it's not going to slow people down. No, okay, right. so, so. Right, I uh, understand And that. that is a state highway. Yeah. It's not a town of Berlin highway. Right. So. That's we, why we had to come to you to go to the state. But the policing of that is the state police. Right. So uh, uh, we should then, I think, get them involved in this discussion early on as well and try to garner their support as well. Because okay. you were talking about across the road from them, you have a... You have a There's a field there that, you know, 
people go over to the field, the kids go over there to play, and you know, you've got people crossing the road. And you also talked about maybe doing some community events down right. there, like uh, a, a fair yeah. that, that may you know, bring vendors farmers in. Farmer's market yeah. or yeah. different things in the field. You know, it won't happen this year, but maybe next year, as soon as we can get permits for different things that we need to do. Was the speed limit 40 through there at one time? It's been 50 for as long as I can remember. Jeff, why don't we patrol it? Why doesn't our police department patrol it? Oh, I thought you said the state police did. Well, it's a state highway. Yes. So. Yeah, but the state highway goes through Northfield. You know, I mean, Northfield yeah. does their part. Well, we can't. Yeah. But, you know, it's just that they come off. If you put 40 on the hill coming out of Mount Pinger, they're going to go by through 50. Now it's 50, and the minute they hit that sign that says 50, they're sailing. So maybe if it was 40, some of them would slow down a little more. Mm -hmm. Well, while you're working on the petition and the resolution from your board, would it be helpful to have the police department bring the, the speed sign down there? That's, that's actually a pr pretty good deterrent to slow people down. Right, you know, if there's a sign that says this, instead of 50, it's 40. Well, we have a sign that... No, the one that tells you how fast you're going? That usually oh. will get people to slow yeah. down a little bit. That's yeah, a good that idea. might. That's a very yeah. good idea, John. Yeah, that might help. Because yeah. you know when they're coming from Northfield this way, you know you got more of a chance of stopping before you see somebody's going to turn. But when you're coming off that hill, you know they come right up on you. Yeah. Quick. They did that in Woodbury because there, there's just a lack of police department in that area and they put the, those signs on each side of Woodbury Lake to slow people down and it certainly does. People see those signs oh, yeah. light up and yeah. they slow right down to the speed limit. So that may be a... Are they, so they, are they permanent signs, John? Or are they they are down? permanent signs, yeah. So maybe we, we really want to think about doing something on more permanent signs. Yeah. Well, I would just think, have the police take their sign board down that has the... Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah, that, that's yeah. what I was originally yeah. talking yeah. about. Until, 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 we, own that. Yeah, until yeah. we get something permanent. Mm -hmm. You know, because down at the farm, they're going back and forth across that road all the time. People, equipment, the workers. So, I'm also wondering about a sign, something like, show the farm ahead. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Who would... To warn, you know, something to slow people down to make them more aware of what's going on. Linda, what's your phone number? I'll give you a call and we'll work on this. Okay, 802-613-3191. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, so thank you, Linda. I'll get a petition going around the neighborhood then. Great. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. St st and start with your board. board. I know you're on the board, so yes. start with the board first. That's what I would do. And so then you could go to your resident and say, this, this has board support. Okay. Can you back it up? Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening. Okay. Um, anything else on this? The uh, next item is uh, uh, police chief recruitment. Right. The draft. Yeah, I sent two weeks ago, I gave you a draft. Let's put in your packet. Uh, mm -hmm. What's black is what you saw already. What's red is new. And this talks the time frame of, of, of reviewing applications, shortlisting, uh, making offers, and ideally the, when the candidate can begin. Um, the end game here under this scenario would be December 20th, 2020 when employment would begin. Um, the, we close Friday on, yeah, Friday we close on receiving applications for the uh, chief of police position. So we really need to at least start the black ones in black right away. Um, and uh, so I don't know what the board's desire is on the schedule. I was hoping it could be sooner than that, but talking to talking to folks who know more about this, uh, they thought it was, this was a fairly reasonable schedule to get it done. The background check will 
it takes quite a while, especially right, right now. Absolutely. I have, I have another question. A little less about the schedule, more about the committee. Now, I mentioned, I talked with the uh, state's attorney, and they had an interest in being on the board. Is, is that something the board wanted to have happen or not? Rory Gibo. At the last meeting, I discussed the state's attorney. I, I, I'm fine with it. I, I think, you know, they have to work closely together. To me, that was, that was a huge thing. So. Well, I don't know why we wouldn't want to utilize that resource. I mean, there's one individual out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or more. Is, is he in Berlin? No, he's the Washington County State's Attorney that the police would be working very closely. No, no, I, I, no I understand who he is. I didn't know, I didn't know if he was a brother or something. I don't think so. I don't believe so. I, I penciled in here, Ted Long, I was trying to get uh, Bruce uh, McDonald here. I, he just never got back to me. So Ted Long, um, he's professional engineer lives in town he said he, he would serve it if you guys wanted him to. I'm just trying to think, um, does Bruce Richardson live in town? I think he does. I believe so. He's uh, emergency management. That's his thing. I wonder if he would be a better choice. Emergency management for who? He does our town plan. You know that board. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about is get too big a pool. How many applicants do we have so far? Seven or eight. I'm just worried that we have, it's like, you know, uh, any board gets over over 11 members, all of a sudden they lose efficiency. <laughs> they too much, uh, too many different opinions. Well, I would think, in my opinion, maybe the replacement of the Barry City Police Chief and now the State's Attorney might be a better solution if you're worried about the size of the board. Yeah. Well, I'm just looking at this. We have the we have the Barry City Police Chief, but not the Montpelier. Uh, no. They have a, they have a brand new chief. They do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to be honest with you, I don't know him. I, we work with Tim. I work. Yeah. You know. and, and Tim said yes. Well, I mean, if you want Tom, you can reach out to Team Bowl and see. Um, you can also run it by Trevor Whipple and get his thoughts as well, since he's, you know, coming in as a consultant to the process to assist us. He might have some good feedback yeah. in terms of everything we've discussed. Yeah, take give Trevor a call and see what he thinks. But, uh, is it okay if you fix it? Because we're like, I'd like to get. Are well, we going to get started by the 11th? I'd like to. Well, that's when they're due. So I think probably they'll go out that weekend, folks. Yeah. Because they have um, to the 29th to uh, shortlist and then start interviewing and complete the interviews by October 15th. How many applicants do we have? Seven or eight now. Okay. With a few days left to apply. Yeah. I can talk to Trevor. But I just don't want to protract this. Yeah. You know. And just talk to Trevor and see what he thinks. I mean, I don't know if uh, the state's attorney has been on any hiring committees or any of the any of the localities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, again, you let Trevor decide the, 
the of of the last or anyone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that would be wise. We'll, we'll, also, we'll say three candidates: Bruce Richardson, Ted Long, and Mr. Uh, Bruce. 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 Yeah, Bruce Richardson, uh, Ted Long, and uh, the state's attorney. Yeah, Rory. Right? Rory, Rory uh, Tebow. <laughs> so, I will. I'll give Trevor a call, um, yeah. and let him. And I'll let you guys know that. And yeah. Tebow may back, beg off on him. Maybe. Uh, I know, but it's a conflict. I, you know, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Anything else on this? We didn't have a lot of notice on the retirement, and I realize that it's probably not the best time, but I always like to think about these things, and it was brought up before by someone else that, you know, have we given any consideration to uh, talking with Barry City about potentially merging our police departments with them, given the close proximity of the two? Well... At one time, we did take and venture out into having shared uh, services, dispatch, dispatch, uh, fire, police, ambulance, emergency services in general. Mm -hmm. And the very first blush of the budget, we'd increase ours by over forty percent. But that was yeah, that was everything. Fire trucks. Yeah, but um, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, is that our budget. For our police, is going to be considerably less than Barry or Montpelier. It's more in tune with Barry Town. But I mean, Does Barry Town have a separate police force. Mm -hmm. They do. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. I mean, that could be. That I mean, almost sounds better to me. Because yeah. I mean, Barry City. Look at their police budget. I mean, more than our whole budget. Well, I, I kind of looked at the model like. You know, and, and it's not to, this is only, you know, talking out loud. It's, I don't want to scare any police officers full time, part time that we have. And it, it's not the intent. It's, you know, if we, if we, you know, essentially had Barry City run our police department and charge us back for the service, do we need as many people as we have because of the close proximity between the two? Or can their people that are on duty cover some of the area? And we could get by with lesser of a bill because it'd be less people overall. I don't know if it would or not, but it, you know, I, I got a question on whether, you know, because there's a lot of overlap, and, and you see it when you drive around. You know, you see the, you know, the Barry people of Berlin and the Berlin people of Barry, and it just makes me wonder if there's enough well, overlap the, to drive down the, the cost. A lot of the neighboring police cars are coming up to the hospital for whatever reason. Berlin. They're buried a lot because of the courthouse. Um, as far as actual patrols, you know, on a per hour basis, if they're doing, if they're doing a, a thousand man hour patrol in Barry every week, and we're doing a, a fifty, it's still a thousand fifty, no matter how you do it. If you're going to keep the level of service the same, if you want to drop the level of service, well then, yes. I can see that, but it's, it, the, uh, the, I think the fixed cost that we have and the fixed cost that Barry Town, uh, Barry City have, are pretty much you know, stolen. I'm just not sure that we have any metrics on what our performance level is. Yeah. Right? Like, what's our service level? Like, what? How do we? How would we? It'd be patrol hours. It'd just be patrol hours. Be someone sitting in a car, someone in a car. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know how else you could possibly do it. Just you know, man hours per day, right. and but it's a good question. I, yeah, I yeah. just you know, yeah. if, but the, the, but again, if if, if even, that if that's the route, or even contemplating it, well, we, yeah. we you know the whole chief of police should should be you know. Right. Put on the I, and I'm not saying that. I just I feel like I got to bring it up. No, you know it was brought on us pretty quick that you know our yeah. chief was leaving, so we didn't have a lot of time to talk about you know what's the next ten years for him. And, and I think what we did we uh, we, baked, we baked into the job description that, that this was a working chief. Yes. Rather than yeah, purely administrative uh, position. So yeah. So th there's that um, added benefit, I guess you want to call it, to 
to the town to the mm -hmm. town side of it. be the only municipality that has asked that question. Right. True. And I'll, you know, I'll talk to him and, and yeah. he's a, you know, pretty smart individual with respect mm -hmm. to this and Absolutely. I think he could weigh in and, and give a good argument one way or the other. Right. But but again, I I, I wouldn't want that to, to take away from the, the, the chief of police hiring Agreed. the those parallel tracks. Mm -hmm. right. yep. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Understood. Anything else on the recruitment? No, are you guys okay with it then besides besides that the uh, last uh, individual Person. community member? Yeah, okay. <coughs> uh, the Stormwater Treatment Bid Award, Tom? I, I just got to make one note for myself there. Yep. So I, um, we opened, I think, on the 31st. I think I sent you guys a note the next day saying we were over budget. Um, uh, the folks from the uh, uh, Regional Planning Commission went back to the funding source and got a verbal commitment to fund the about not quite 13K shortfall that would put the project into 2021. Um, I asked. Uh, I asked them to memorialize that that verbal agreement, and um, so they said they would. Um, so what what you have here is is, is just the uh, what would be the recommendation would be the Del Percy was the loan bidder for the 2021 piece of the project. Uh, assuming that that I get a letter from Regional Planning Commission that satisfies my, you know, angst over is the money real. Um, uh, you'll likely have at next meeting a uh, uh, sign a, a notification to Percy that that they will that they will, they will be awarded the contract. Um, so, if you have any questions on this document, let me know and. Transitional return to work program policy. Uh, we may recall our conversation at uh, not the last meeting, but the, the full last full meeting. We talked about that there was uh, the, the town had really no language in either its hourly non-unionized personnel policy, uh, nor in their collective bargaining agreement for. Um, Folks who get injured on the on the in the workplace, how do they return to work? So I said I'd research and come up with some draft language for the board's consideration. So what you have here is um, uh, two items. The first one um, is basically would be your your policy. It's the Town of Berlin Vermont Transitional Return to Work Program. This. So it was a template from Vermont League of City of Towns. So I, I you know, turned it into Berlin where appropriate. I added on the very, uh, the second page, page two of two there, under the list of tasks, that was blank the first time I, I sent it to you guys. So now I, I populated with some, some um, uh, thoughts that can be, um, uh, in effect, light duty tasks. This is not a, an exhaustive list. You can add to it at, at any time, but it's, it gives a, a flavor to this document of, of what 
the town would, would look, look at. Um, so I know you're just really getting this for the first time. Uh, and along with this policy would be the uh, transitional duty agreement. And it's really between the employee, their supervisor, and, and the town on expectations. Um, so I don't know what the board's pleasure is on, on these documents, but again, I think it's something that's needed in both of those. Um, it's, it'd be relatively easy to, to, uh, for you folks to adopt and put in the non-unionized hourly worker uh, uh, employee handbook. I know, uh, I believe the, the collective bargaining agreement is coming up for um, soon, so I would suggest that the town consider, uh, as part of your negotiations, similar language in that CBA. Mm -hmm. I have a few questions, but they're primarily to do with uh, you speaking with our council about it, and I don't know if it's appropriate to do so now or to do so in executive session. Maybe you could just talk about it in general. In general, I mean, it, it was broadly the city council. They have in-house council. It, it was vetted by them. Right. Um, and, uh, but it was not vetted by Berlin Council. I, I just took it and filled out the template. And okay. So, if we can put this on the next agenda. We can take and uh, review this, and then we'll come, to come back with any comments that you yeah. have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and can you give a copy to Rob just to have him peruse it? I, I can. Um, yeah. I I I'd really like to get your comments first before we change the document. Yeah. Before we give Rob the take to pay attorney for place. Yeah. Um, I, again, you could. You could email me directly with your comments, and I could, I could. It's a word document, you know. We could, you could easily see what folks are saying, and I could type it up, and you could have it. Uh, you know, you, you guys get it up several days before your next meeting, and we could see, see what the other comments that folks are having on it. I do like the language, um, the first full paragraph at the top of page two of two. Um, if any employee at any time now or in the future were to ever refuse um, an agreement such as this, I like that language that's included because um, you just never know if an employee is going to agree to it or not, being willing to sign, etc. So I think that's worded well. I would like to say I can take credit for it, but I cannot. <laughs> Well, you did a nice job filling out the template no, and putting in the list I spelled of right. tasks. Yeah. Did a nice job. Okay, so uh, I don't have anything on page two of two except for this, except for the signature block in this one line. This and is I, the page I'm looking page. at, page two of two. I don't have and it. it. This is page two of two. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. one in the very right. front. We'll give her back, so. I'll show you one. There's two of those. This is the paragraph that I was yeah, thinking. It. It's yeah, right after the minutes of Dale Percy. I'm just going to make this easier. So, there you go. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Sorry about that. Teamwork. <laughs> the other two of two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's the pleasure. Uh, yeah, we'll okay. take and get back to okay. you over the next two weeks. And I, again, I, the, the easy piece is the, the non-union yeah. employee handbook. Okay. Uh, private room, water works way? Yes, so you guys have something that looks like this. Dodge Farm Road is um, all the lots after sitting idle for a uh, very long time, have been sold. Uh, there have been uh, four zoning permits issued for single family homes up there. So you can see the, where the little red squiggly lines are on. Uh, 
at the very uh, top of that page at 225, that's the town of Berlin's water tank. So that whole, where you can see where Dodge Farm Road is, so that whole, as whole line from the the D and road up to the up to the water tank is basically our driveway off of Dodge Farm Road. So, so our address there at the water tank now is 225 uh, Dodge Farm Road. Uh, because of these other developments, and there's three three circles in red. Those are three houses that have been permitted. There would be now. Um, four E911 addresses off of that um, town of Berlin driveway, or lack of a better. And so E911 requires that when you have three or more addresses off of a spur, you need to, to name the road. It can't, um, it, it, it just, because 225, our water tank is is measured from that point right here. Everything off of that just doesn't jive. And, and so I'm suggesting uh, that this spur be named Waterworks Way. I spoke to the folks from E911. That is no, there's no conflict with that name um, in yeah. Central Vermont. Um, and uh, so, uh, I, but the select board needs to to uh, approve naming that road. Now, is there still a gate at the wood line? It is, yes. For the to the water tank, yeah. So it's gated, yes. Motion on this. I make the motion to name the private road as described by Tom Badowski, Waterworks Way. Second. Any further discussion? Yeah, I have a question. Oh. Oh. So it's private road. Who's doing the road maintenance like we do now? Uh, so I've spoke the, the, the three uh, on in the red. It's one owner, and I spoke that owner today. And we've had that conversation, and I'm going to uh, give them a, a, a shared maintenance agreement. And I told them, look, the town. When well, we plow the road in. When we plow the road, it's really only to get our water. Yeah. Uh, and so we don't go up there every day to do water. We may go up there once a week or every other week. So, so I explained to the owner, and they were agreeable to uh, putting in the deeds to each of those. Um, the requirement for a ma maintenance agreement. So yeah. those have been permitted with through our zoning with curb cuts off the private road that the town owns. Uh, yeah, like that's what you just said. There's permits to approve building lots, off. and those curb cuts have been approved off that private road. It, there are no curb cuts on a private road. Okay. Well, they've been approved to have driveways off our private road. Yeah. It's a right of way, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. That scares me. Yeah. They those roads have the rudimentary roads have been in there for some time. Now. Right. Yeah, we improved the one up to the water tank simply for access for the cement trucks and whatnot. Yeah. The crane and, um, those other roads are at best light gravel. Yeah, so. One fellow bought all the three lots or they take and disperse them? One person bought all three lots, but there I think there were four other lot other lots outside of these yeah. that had sold, and one just got a permit today closer down to to uh, Scott Hill Road, the next lot up off of Scott Hill Road. Really, yeah. interesting. So real estate selling, big time. Very much so. It is. So we'll be just like New York City. Uh, Thank you, Tom. Did we vote on that? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? We now have a road called Waterworks Way. Thank you very much. Uh, local government in expensive reimbursement grant? So I, I sent you um, 
a note. I became aware that uh, the, the federal government may, federal government through the, uh, the state of Hawaii through the federal government had a grant program out there uh, that um, Berlin eligible for about seventy thousand dollars of uh, COVID improvements. Um, uh, and so I, I applied uh, COVID expenses and improvements. So uh, I, I applied for the whole nearly $70,000. Um, staff has put together, I think you may, you all may have seen some of that, uh, uh, some of the ideas. Uh, the caveat here is that the money needs to be spent before uh, January 1st. So uh, there is a laundry list of ideas. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the select board for for, for uh, two uh, two considerations. The first one is well before that you know any input that you guys have. Uh, uh, I thought some sort of audio system so we don't have to deal with this if we have these kind of meetings here so people can actually hear us. It's the biggest complaint. David's here. David complains that he can't hear. Uh, so some sort of audio visual enhancement to me may make sense here. Um, uh, I, I know Diane would like to get a, a like a, a banker's night deposit box so she can have payments inside the building rather than how we do it now. Uh, Corinne mentioned, you know, we have this temporary window-ish thing over here for to make that more of a permanent structure. So I thought that was a good idea. Uh, so, so we've been throwing throwing things around like that. Um, so what what I like what I'd like the the, the select board to, to do is to uh, appoint two people that when when we have an idea about doing something, yes, no. You know, yeah. and so that's the first thing I'd, I'd like. And the second thing I, I, I think that's going to require to be able to get this done, because you have to spend the money before the end of the year, is that we're really going to have to uh, bypass our bidding process. Uh, and uh, we're just not going to have enough time to, to, to you know, put specs together, put, 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 bids out, you know, 15, it's just, we're just not going to have enough time to get the work done. And so I would, I would like for, for you guys to consider waiving the bidding process for this, for this grant, and for this grant. Well, I mean, since it is a grant, it's not going to come out of the town coffers. True. So I don't see any problem with that. Most of the stuff will be under what we need or require to use to bid anyway, right? I'm sorry? Most of the items on here will be under the five thousand dollars. I mean, an audio video system would be a lot more than that. Uh, uh, you know, so there, there are there, there are potential items that would be higher, greater than that. We have done teleconferences there on all systems. Um, I'm curious. We don't know exactly how much we we're going to get though, right? No, so we can't really start. The, worst, the latest we're to know is September 15th. I sure hope they let us know sooner than that. Um, no, it's only a week now. That's true. That's <laughs> yeah, true. after we but, count, so. Yeah, so, but I'm hoping we know sooner than that. Uh, but I think what we can do in that interim period is vet the ideas and, and at least get going on it. So the ideas now are just for the, uh, the window and the Diane's Dropbox. Uh, yeah, some sort of audio visual enhancement here. Uh, laptops for for all of the um, uh, highway folks to use so, so they can do their safety training, so they don't have to, they can do it online. Um, uh, uh, Diane had an idea of a the the key keyless entry for the buildings that... They that have a, you have the police department now, but if we could extend it into this part of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Any air filtration or anything like that? Could be. I again, I, I've. Um, People are still. 
Are there restrictions on how you spend the money? It has to be for COVID expenses, COVID relief. Um, and any idea that that we would say, yeah, thumbs up to, I'm going to call to these guys and say, this is what we're looking to do. Good with us. Right. We deal with that a lot of work, going through the criteria of what is a COVID expense yep. or what is COVID relief, you know, what's going to help get us through the crisis. Yep. So that, I, would, you know, I, would, I would float it by someone here at the department to get their final thumbs up on it. Well, I mean, even though it is $69,000, I mean, if we don't spend it all, it's no loss. Correct. But it would be nice to get that so the town clerk has a window. And yeah, yeah. And we talked about a, a bulletin board outside, a freestanding bulletin board, double sided. You know, that was about five, three, four thousand dollars, something like that. Like a, like a kiosk? Yep, or? yep, yep. So that was an idea. Kudos for applying for it. I hope they do get back to you soon. I do too. It's excellent. <laughs> so I'm telling you, the 15th at 4 30. I would volunteer to to be one of those select board members that looks at over stuff, mm -hmm. just because of the COVID experience. That that's excellent. Okay. Uh, anything else on this, Tom? I'd like to have two people. I think I think it makes I think it makes sense for two select board members. Unless you think one is good enough for me, I, that's fine. I don't care. Well, I mean, you and a select board member should set Fair enough. Yeah, I, think, good. I think that would work real well. Yeah. Okay. Good. Stream on it. You need a motion to that effect? I wouldn't think. All right. How about yeah. the... We will when we come to spend the money. How about right. the bidding piece of it? Um, Waiving that requirement of... Yeah, we'll have to have a motion on that one. Diane, is it 3000 or 5000 now? 5000 So I entertain a motion for waiving the Berlin bidding process of uh, five of uh, over five thousand dollars to suspend it for this grant only. I make a motion to suspend the the local uh, bid policy um, for the purposes of spending the local government expense reimbursement grant. Close enough? Yeah, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. It is the Christmas season. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Approval of sub board minutes for July 22nd and August 3rd. I make the motion to approve the select board minutes for Wednesday, July 22nd, 2020. Good night, Diane. Night. Good night. Good night. For July 22nd, you said? Yes. I'll uh, second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I also make the motion to approve the Town of Berlin Select Board Minutes for Monday, <coughs> August 3rd, 2020. You a second? I'll second it. Um, any discussion? I don't believe Angelina was at that meeting. It's an August meeting. She was gone the full month of August. She's listed as attending. I will make that correction. Um, 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 um. Uh, um, a second on that. All those in, uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries and. Are you good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make the motion to approve payroll warrant 21 05 for payroll from August 16, 2020 to August 29, 2020, paid on September 2nd of this year in the amount of $39,057.13. Also, payroll warrant 21 G05 with check 2482 to 2525 in the amount of $98,804.62. Payable warrant for FY17 truck payment to Community Bank NA in the amount of $16,348.78. Second. Any further discussion? So I had some questions, but I think Diane was probably the best person to ask on most of them. What was it? Uh, we paid $240 a month for a fax line. For what? For a fax line. We have a fax. Yeah, it just seems. Super expensive. I think that's the rent on the machine, though, isn't it? Oh, maybe, and that's that's why. I said, yeah, I I wasn't sure. And then uh, we bought another sixty five hundred dollars in screen sand. I thought we had already taken our sand delivery this year. Screen sand isn't uh, road sand. Okay. <laughs> because I mean, there's no point in screening roads. Okay. And then um, fifty four hundred dollars for roadside mowing. Was that for the entire year, or was that just the last payment? That was the best. That was, the best. That was mm -hmm. okay. And that was it, I think. Yep. Good question. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Start signing. And uh, roundtable job. Um, I don't have. Oh, uh, I wanted to bring to the attention of everyone, um, Justin's already aware, but there was a, uh, a person got hurt up off from the, the hiking trail off from Brookfield Road um, on Irish Hill Loop, and it took the fire department and ambulance four and a half hours to get the person out, um, because, in my view, partially because you can't get over that bridge with an ATV to go up and get them. Actually, um, yeah, I texted Joe Staub and Victor Logic, and I asked if my tractor would get up there for him if they needed anything. You know, and they said, you can't do it, it's too narrow. And so it was only a dislocated me. Thank goodness. Yeah. But I think it's something that we should and I had thought, push on to. I had thought we had asked to have that on the agenda for this meeting and asked to have the Conservation Board in for this meeting, as I recall. I don't, yeah. I remember that, but I know we were supposed to be talking with the Conservation Board about this. Yeah. They were supposed to be talking with the snowmobile people and the ATVers. They're not going to reach out to them unless we put some real pressure on them. Yeah. yeah I, I just saw that, I mean, they were there a long time trying to yeah. get someone out, and it was just, just a sprained knee, or a, just a dislocated knee, excuse me, but... Um, it would have gone, you know, hours faster if the bridge had been wide enough to be able to get something up there. How recent did this occur? I'll tell you the exact day. A week or two ago? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's okay. that's all that I had. I just wanted to make everyone aware of it. It's right on my road. So. Thank you. I know the conservation committee is soon to meet because I was uh, talking to them about this uh, stormwater bid about getting on their agenda to talk about that, but the funding came through. Um, I think they're going to invite me to that meeting to, to talk about some other things, so uh, when I get it out, I'll, I'll bring this up. Do we know what size the bridge should be? should be 8 to 10 feet wide. I would think at least 8. 8 feet right. wide? Yeah. Oh, I mean, 8 foot bridge will take a snow cat. Right. Yeah. Well, and that even goes with mountain bikers out there in the yeah. winter time. I mean, I think yeah. maybe they close the trails with we, people are hiking. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. went up there last Sunday, and the, and the bridge is in very poor condition. Even after the repairs, the repairs definitely make it walkable, but um, it definitely needs to be replaced. Yeah. So um, we should do it right. I'll, I'll, assuming they're going to invite me, I'll talk to them about it. So it was, it was August 26th. Okay. And I just wanted to add about that piece of it too. I mean, 
I think we had in that discussion, that Darling Road is a, still a class four trail. Yeah. And it's and if you look at the signs, the signs say, you know, open A T V travel and recre you know. Yeah. So I know they, they, they didn't really didn't seem in favor of a bridge that wide, but since it is a town trail outside of that, I would think that we would be able with all the outdoor recreation I would assume we'd be able to just yeah, I, I, I know the guys from Waterbury Rec, uh, Rescue, they do a lot of backcountry stuff on um, uh, Camel's Hump and stuff like that. I, I'll see if they, what their recommendation, they, they're, I mean, they're a voice of authority too. I mean, they, they do lots of this kind of stuff. And, yeah. and they've got, they, I know they bought special equipment to right. get up and down the mountain. Well, Bast bought Northfield a um, four-wheeler with tracks with the, uh, the yes. The That's toboggan what, behind it. The same thing that, yep. that Waterbury has. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And uh, the only other thing I've mentioned, uh, the, the tree tapping on the town forest. Uh, Justin and I were up in that area, and we didn't walk the entire thing, but on the, I guess it'd be on the north side of the property, using the, the GPS and the phone, which isn't exact, it looked like they were on Northfield property, like right on the line. I mean, it came when you show the app, it shows you where your, your blue dot is. And they were on the Northfield property on that side. Mm -hmm. We don't know that up over, we didn't go up there, but mm -hmm. uh, we did We did look at that when we were up there. I worry, I worry more about what they were doing in the Berlin side. <laughs> right. Well, there wasn't this, this was Berlin Town Forest. Yeah. This was Berlin Town point. Forest, Northfield Town Forest. So Berlin's here, Northfield's here. They were right up to that Northfield line. But I, we didn't go basic. We were on the Northfield side yeah. of the... Yeah. Of the there's the 350 acres there. We were on the okay. on the other side of the hill. We didn't have enough gas. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything for round table, Justin? No. Well, I'll throw it off. No, the only thing I was going to touch on was the Western Mobile Home Park, but Tom was good to get that on um, the agenda for tonight. So I'm good. And executive session? Yes. Your motion for a Entering into executive session. Was that the no personnel? And contract. All of them. All of them. Well, I would move to enter executive session for legal personnel and contracts. I second the motion. All in, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 We're in the executive session.